Do you want to do you want to start? Yeah, let's uh, let's get started. Um, I think Taylor's got the got the deck. Uh, we'll just quickly go to um, in terms of TOC members present. I think I have every everyone but uh, Brian Grant and and Kelsey right now. So seven out of nine. But we'll uh, I'll, I'll check before the meeting is over uh, for others. And we got a lot of outgoing folks uh, here today too. But um, you know the uh, you know rough agenda today is we're gonna discuss the election results, uh, both um, you know incoming new TOC members and uh, provide some time for outgoing TOC members to, to make some comments, talk a little bit about uh, DNI and the TOC, um, congratulate Cordinas on graduation, talk about CNC of SIGs uh, and a bit of our community backlog. So um, I'll steer it over for you, Alexis, if you kind of want to go through these uh, next next slides. Sure, I mean, I think they speak for themselves. Welcome everybody uh, to this unique handover TOC session. Uh, congratulations, Cordy and S. Um, just want to remark that several people have commented that now is a good time for us to review our graduation criteria. The current intent is that it's pretty easy to get into Sandbox and there's no marketing associated with it. And then getting into incubation is pretty high hurdle with quite a bit of DD. And then graduation should cover off more um, things around you know, community, where the governance is in place and non-technical criteria. However, I think that there's an emerging view that we do need to validate some technical criteria during the final graduation step. And so I refer you to the mailing list discussion about that. Please pay attention to that discussion and contribute. I think over the next few months, uh, we need to find some time to review the graduation criteria. Uh, not by very much, but by a bit. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, Summer of code, please apply. Next slide, please. Conferences. Uh, Chris, what are we saying about this right now? Schedule will be out soon. Uh, thank you for everyone on the program committee that's reviewing. But um, yeah, here are three main events uh, for the year. CFP, open, CFP will open for China soon. Chris, can you please look into the amount of work that the reviewers are doing? I received some back channel complaints from a few people saying that they felt very, very overloaded with many, many hundreds of things to review in a very short space of time. Uh, okay. and, and remarkably few cookies to justify it. Okay, will do. Thank you. Next slide, please. Yep, annual report. Uh, we just released it yesterday. Um, so feel free to take a look at it. it basically covers everything we did in uh, 2018 from helping projects, uh, events, you know, maintainer satisfaction and, and so on. So uh, please take a look. And if you have any comments on how to improve it, uh, let us know. We tried to uh, include a lot more uh, data this, this year around. Good stuff. Okay, next slide. Election results. I take it everybody has seen these. Uh, please shout now if you have any questions about this. Anybody? Very good. Welcome to these new people. I hope you're all on the call. Okay, I believe this is the moment where we say thank you to the outgoing TOC members. Chris, what's the protocol here? Yeah, so, you know, my thing is, uh, you know, uh, first, you know, thanks and, you know, give people some time to, to make kind of, you know, any comments or advice they want to give for the kind of new TOC based on their experience. I know uh, ben, ben is on, I think uh, some others uh, are on also. So it's the kind of stage is theirs to uh, make any comments. Sure. Passing advice. What's no, the passing advice, Chris? Do you want to kind of call on us in turn, or did, does anyone else want to say anything? Yeah, this is Brian Cantrell. Yeah. Brian Cantrell, you 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 volunteered yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean, congratulations to the new TOC. Obviously, um, I think it's a it's a terrific TOC, um, and I'm you know, excited to see. Uh, so excited was excited to see so many qualified people run for election, and excited to see obviously a, a terrifically well-qualified TOC elected. Um, the, the one piece of advice I would give is, well, a couple pieces of advice, I guess. Um, I think for each of you that are coming in on the TOC, um, try to figure out what you wanna get done in the next, what they've got, everyone's on a two-year term, right? I can't remember if we, I think that. Yeah, yeah. 
And so try to figure out what you really want to get done over the next two years. And I think it's actually important to have, have an agenda. Um, not, I mean, not, not that you should subvert other things, don't have a hidden agenda, but have, um, have goals that you want to achieve. Um, because I think it's, it's easy to, um, I'm, I, I feel that um, honestly, personally, I think We lose you, Brian. There were just things that, that didn't end up happening for other reasons. Um, so I, I would say have an idea of what you really want to achieve um, and what you want the CNCF to be. Um, I think one open question is, is the CNCF going to be the Kubernetes Foundation? Um, and that wasn't the original intent, but you know, maybe that's and maybe that's something we've overly resisted, or we overly resisted on the outgoing TOC. But something to kind of consider. Uh, and then the other thing I would say is, so so have a kind of a clear idea of what you want to get done. The other thing I would say is, um, there are a lot of financial resources available, um, or should be that should be available to the CNCF. The CNCF has brought in um, a lot of member companies, and think about how you can put that money to work. Um, and Chris has been, um, it, it, Chris has been really good about about helping, I think, us brainstorm ways, but there are lots of things that we should be able to go do um, that are not just conferences um, to actually aid, I think, the most core constituencies, which are the actual communities of users and developers, um, not just the, the immediate constituency of the governing board. So those, those would be my two pieces of advice, but again, congratulations to everybody. And I guess it's actually, well, I actually will add one final piece of advice. Um, I think it's really important to have um, a diversity of thought on the TOC. Um, and I think that you want to, as you are looking towards your TOC elected member, I would encourage you to kind of look at, look for someone that's gonna bring in a, a new perspective, a different perspective, because I think a couple of times over, we really appreciated having very different perspectives and having pretty different backgrounds and, and coming to problems from different backgrounds. Um, definitely the most rewarding bit for me was um, getting to know and working with my fellow TOC members um, who I, I really enjoyed. So thanks to all of them. And with that, I'll adios. <laughs> thanks, Brian. Any, anyone else on the parting side want to make some comments? I mean, I do, I do echo Brian's comment on uh, it is very easy to, uh, it's very easy for the group, particularly when it is made up entirely of people who work for companies providing, you know, these products for financial, you know, as, as vendors, essentially, um, to really lose track of what people who are not, uh, who are not working for those companies really actually need and want. Um, and so, you know, make sure you're really making a lot of time to get that perspective because uh, there's a big echo chamber effect right now, I think, that you really have to fight very hard against. Um, and, you know, if you really want to make this a successful, broad, and sort of diverse foundation, that's going to be an important thing to continue to seek out. So, thanks, Camille. Anyone uh, else? I know Ben is here. If not, uh, I think that's it. I just want to say thanks. I think CNCF, uh, you know, was it's definitely an incredibly uh, different organization a few years ago, and a lot of these folks put a lot of time to kind of get it where it was. So we're all super appreciative um, of, of their effort. Um, so Alexis, I will uh, give it back to you to kind of discuss the next topic. Uh, amongst thank the you. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, everybody. Oh. I particularly wanted to say thank you to everybody who um, did the TOC, but also ask them to don't go away. Please stay with us if you can. Uh, we'd really need your help with all kinds of things. We don't know what that, all of them are yet. So please, please offer help to people who want to come into the TOC, 
as contributors or community or in the SIGs, it's very important to have continuity. So the chair election, I am, I could not be more relieved to see this uh, slide. I have to say it's been quite a lot of uh, emotional uh, cost doing this thing, but um, I'm really excited to see some strong names in the hat. It's not too late to nominate yourself if you're one of the handful of people who can. So do bear that in mind. Um, any questions about this and the timing, the scheduling, Chris, do you want to just talk us through the dates? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, basically, my goal is to kick off the election today. Uh, basically, if there's any other TOC members that want to run, please let me know before the end of this meeting. Uh, and then I'll kick off the election uh, and have it run till Monday next week. And then we'll be ready for the new TOC, TOC chair for the February uh, 19th meeting. So. Chris, sorry, just a quick question there, and sorry, this is a bit of a late chime in from me. Um, given that we have a, a seat up for election in the next few weeks, Correct. Um, I was wondering whether we want to make it possible for that person to run for this chair position, um, or I'm not, how we want to handle that. Yeah, I, I'm not opposed. I think it's fine for you know for for you to run, uh, in, in my opinion. And if we go to a point where um, that person is no longer there and we need a new chair, then we do a new, a new chair election. Oh, okay, and, and just to be clear, I wasn't actually uh, talking about myself running or not. I was actually more referring to the person who may replace me soon, uh, okay. whether it makes sense for them to be able to be the chair. Um, uh, I, I would probably kick off a new election. Okay, as long, I mean, I, I think what it does is, if we do it now, it means we kind of have to do it again in a month because there's another candidate. <laughs> So uh, I don't know, Let, let's maybe uh, figure that out. Uh, okay. I think it would be useful to be able to make that a possibility that the new uh, member could become the chair. Cool, I mean, the beauty is it's, it's kind of the, T to, the TOC to decide here on that one, but we'll, we'll take that privately, okay? Yeah, makes sense, thank you. Okay, next slide please, Taylor, if you're there. Okay, Chris, back to you. Yeah, so, um, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, I'm sure discussion in the last, uh, you know, I think week since we've, uh, you know, nominated and elected the new, t uh, new TOC. Um, you know, we uh, have had a lot of private discussion amongst the current set uh, of TOC on ways of, you know, essentially improving the situation where uh, we're at a point where we have elected, um, you know, there's nine men uh, on the TOC and definitely it's not reflective of kind of the wider community um, that we have here. So uh, the TOC is looking to uh, explore our kind of essentially other ways to expand um, the diversity in kind of all parts of the CNCF uh, governing structure. There has been discussions on proposing specific changes on the allocation of TOC seats. Um, right now we kind of have this structure where six of them are elected um, by the governing board um, two are elected by the TOC themselves, and one is elected by the end user community. Um, we've had discussions of, uh, you know, essentially giving a little bit more variety to that, where maybe there are less governing board selected seats, more end user seats, uh, maybe seats representing developers and maintainers. Um, we're still essentially having these discussions and plan to bring it up uh, to the board uh, on, in March when the next board meeting is. Um, you know, at the moment, uh, we have a TOC selected seat that becomes available in March um, that we plan on uh, electing, uh, you know, someone new potentially. But right now, I just kind of wanted to let the community know that we've heard um, a lot of folks' concerns and are essentially kind of opening up. Ask the community on, uh, you know, what they think and uh, essentially opening up the the mic for for comments and of course if any other TOC members kind of want to chime in on the discussion they're more than welcome welcome to that sound about right Alexis yeah I mean a few folks on the TOC incoming had some strong views on this would you want to speak up on it I think this is an incredibly important topic I mean just I mean for the record I think all of us you know, you hold an election, you get results, you look at, and you're like, how did we end up here? And so now we're in a position of, all right, what do we do about it now? And so, you know, our lines of control here are limited. Um, so we're going to do what we can, but I think we, we want to let folks know that, you know, it doesn't end there. 
So I think that's the intent here. I think exactly how we go about that, how hard we push when we push is something that I think we're gonna to have to be figuring out over, over the coming weeks. Thank you. Okay, please, can we have the next slide? Uh, any comments from the community, by the way, before we rush rush through? Hey, I was, uh, one quick question. This is Jeff. Uh, the, ha, have there been discussions with the governing board itself about the diversity topic? And is there, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, are we waiting wait till March to find out, or is, or, or is there recognition there that that there's a that there's a problem as well? Uh, we have brought it up to some governing board members, um, at least staff has. Uh, there hasn't been a formal discussion between, say, the TOC and the governing board. Essentially, you know, the way it works is we would be looking for a proposal uh, from, you know, the TOC potentially on how they would want to change uh, the TOC uh, structure, uh, for example. But it's definitely slotted for discussion in, in March uh, at the March board meeting. Hey, Chris, uh, Alexis, Dim's here. So uh, is the plan to take a specific proposal to the governing board for that meeting or the discussion is gonna start there when you get to the governing board? Uh, it'll be up to the TOC how they want to essentially do this. There's been already some proposals from you know folks like Brian Grant and, and others on how to structure things, but um, I still think they're, it, it's in the discussion phase. Um, you know, uh, if we have a proposal to the governing board, they'll probably have to discuss it themselves. Then there's a vote and then so on. So these things take, you know, usually a bit of time just due to, you know, kind of governance and, and process because updating the charter uh, essentially will be like a super majority uh, vote of the governing board. So it'll take a little bit of, of, of time to, to discuss that. Got it. Thank you. Okay. On to the SIGS uh, presentation. Uh, Quinton, why don't you take us through this since you are the editor of the doc at this point? Uh, sure. Um, uh, actually, just really was a was a, a cleaner upper of the doc. I think uh, Alexis actually was the one who uh, started this conversation and, and uh, did the bulk of the work. Um, but yeah, there's a document out there. Essentially, um, uh, I think many people have weighed in on it already. Uh, it sketches out a plan for uh, creating CNCF special interest groups. Um, the goal, you know, as written on the slides there, is, is basically to help the TOC to scale in its ability to uh, serve its duties um, and provide value to both the projects and the end users of CNCF technology. Um, I won't go through all the details now, but basically the, these SIGs would be uh, created by the TOC um, and they would uh, provide expertise, be, be sort of valued experts in particular fields um, to help the TOC to evaluate projects, uh, to educate end users uh, and provide a various variety of other services that require, uh, you know, expertise, knowledge in particular domains. Um, if you can maybe flip to the following slide, uh, these are the proposed initial SIGs. Um, the thinking was to try and keep this list relatively limited, at least to start with, um, so that we don't end up with a kind of a six ball situation where we have large numbers of SIGs, uh, a significant percentage of which are, are not very effective. So the aim was to start with a short list. Um, and, and even within that list, start with perhaps uh, two or three of the highest priority ones, get those working and effective, uh, and then move on to create the additional ones and perhaps split some of these SIGs if they turn out to be too large in terms of their scope. And there are a couple that stand out there as, as being you know, pretty big. Uh, the second last one in particular, Core and Applied Architectures, covers quite a lot of ground. <clears throat> so we might consider splitting that at some point. Um, yeah. Uh, if anyone has any questions, perhaps we can just dwell on this slide for one minute. I know there were some questions around which projects get allocated to which areas, whether the naming of the areas is uh, appropriate. Uh, just to be clear, these names are not finalized. I uh, absolutely expect that the SIGs uh, themselves will uh, wordsmith some of these uh, names and make sure that the uh, scope of, of each one of these SIGs is very clearly articulated. 
Um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions around this slide, now is probably a good time to chime in. Quentin, this is Matt Farina. Uh, when I look at this, I see the CNCFCI, which is a current working group listed under the app dev ops and testing. But if I look at a lot of what's in that CI group, I see things like um, testing Kubernetes across different clouds. Hey, right? Matt, or Prometheus. Yes. That's, that's something that we tried to clarify in the original version that may have gotten munged. Uh, the CNCF CI group will not be part of this SIG. It's a separate thing associated with testing. Um, I think we need to look at CI CD pipelines and workflows as um, either part of app dev or my preference, a separate SIG from app dev and focus on app, app dev on application types. But that's a, that's a conversation we can have offline. But to your question, CNCF CI is not part of this SIG. Okay, it, it just listed that way in the list, which is all I was curious about. The other parts I agree with you on being here, it was the CNCFCI element sitting here. So it should probably be broken out as a eighth, or how do I get, we got six, seventh one is the plan? Yeah, we can we can definitely figure that out. Uh, okay. The brackets there were intended to denote, denote that this was a kind of a different situation than the other project. Yeah. But, uh, okay, that's I all I was noting. Yeah. I have uh, a Joe, question. did you have a question? Yeah, so I mean, <clears throat> I, I, I've been catching up on this because I hadn't been paying attention to the doc until I was uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta pay more attention to the TOC stuff uh, now. And so I, I gave it a, a, a read through and I think it's great. I did have some questions um, and I don't have all the history so I can take this stuff offline if y'all want. But um, I, I noticed like, for example, that multiple times through the document, the phrase unbiased is used. And I think, you know, I look at this with some of the comments coming from like Brian and, and Camille, and I'm wondering, is there anything as a TOC that we can do to try and put some meat on the bones of what does unbiased actually mean? How do we enforce that? And I do know that like, you know, looking outside of our little bubble, there are folks who have very strong opinions about the CNCF um, and, uh, and would say that there's nothing unbiased about what we do. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that that's true, but I'm just wondering if, the, and maybe that's a larger issue uh, beyond just the, the SIG stuff here. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And, and maybe this is not, we don't have enough time to yeah. do uh, justice to the topic. What, what I can say is there are some words in the document which hopefully go towards that, which is that we feel we've articulated that we would like, we, we have this theory that, that, you know, the rising tide uh, raises all boats um, and that our aim is to rise the tide, which, which involves uh, basically increasing adoption of cloud native technologies, not, at, uh, not to benefit one project over another or one vendor over another, but to raise the tide. And I, and I personally think that's a, fairly useful metaphor to uh, encapsulate this unbiased idea. Uh, but yeah, certainly further discussion and input most welcome and valued, I think. Yeah, and I think maybe we can have a, a, a different and separate discussion about that at some point. Um, yeah. But the other things that I think are, are, you know, one year terms for the, for the chairs of the SIGs with staggered, that means we're always gonna be having elections. Um, I don't know if there's been thought put into that, but that, that implies an election every six months for every SIG. Yeah, I had the same question. Uh, well, every, yeah, every six months for every other SIG. But yeah, uh, we, could, we could expand that to two years. Uh, I don't think that would be a major oh, problem. Okay, so what do you mean? Every six months for every other SIG. No, we'd want to have, like for any particular SIG, we want to have some continuity of chairs, right? That means that every SIG will have an election every six months if we if we. Oh yes, sorry, you you're correct, absolutely. Well, yeah, that, as it's written, and yes, I agree, that's dubious. <laughs> I'm just like I know how much work goes into these elections, and and it probably you know it'll probably fall on 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 on, on Chris and uh, and others at the CNC have to do. Well, yeah, I mean just just to be clear, um, the the proposal as it stands at the moment is that the TOC basically approves the chairs. Um, uh, and selects them in, in consultation with the SIG and the, and the um, SIG chairs at the time. So, you know, in practice, there are three chairs. Uh, you know, they're going to want to replace one or two of them every uh, year, um, or sorry, every six months. And yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how heavyweight that process will in practice be. It's not quite the same as 
you know, having a board of directors elect, you know, eight seats on, on, on the TOC. This is yeah, a, yeah, and a much lighter board. work process. Yeah. I, I think the original intent was that they would be um, they would be two year terms, but the first term two of the seats would be one year. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, the, the the other side of it is, you know, do you want shares that that are you know ineffective fairly quickly and then you know sit around for two years or eighteen months, whatever? But yeah, we can we can figure that out. I, I agree that longer terms might be more appropriate. And then my final comment, and then I'll shut up. Uh, on this slide here with the with the list of SIGs, um, these are all so like when we think about sort of who are the sort of constituencies for the CNCF R broadly, there's, you know, vendors, which dominates the governing board. Part of our job here is to look at the community and the projects. This, um, this is all focused around the, the projects. Um, is there a thought? And I think the CNC, the, the CI stuff is, is, is sort of more meta. Uh, and I think, you know, plays into that. Are there ideas around sort of SIGs that are more community focused, more user focused? Yes. Uh, versus just project focus. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking in terms of things that are cross-cutting, because like one of the, I think the critical SIGs in Kubernetes is the contributor experience SIG, which ends up being a bit of a, of a, of a kitchen sink where we dump a lot of stuff in there, but it is this idea of like, how do we actually build efficiencies across the project versus just focusing on single technical issues? Yeah, um, brief, brief response to that. Um, so so I don't, I don't actually think that these SIGs are as project focused as they may come across. We, we had to assign projects to SIGs just because, you know, that, that was part of the intention of these SIGs. But if you look at the, at the actual names and the areas they cover, they're not actually designed to fit projects. They're actually designed to fulfill end user requirements. Um, and to whatever extent that may not have been achieved, we should perhaps uh, look at, at uh, changing things. But the intention was this is how, you know, end users think about some of the space and we would like them to be able to, you know, figure out which of these areas uh, is the most interesting to them or, or where, where to uh, focus their attention. Okay, so then my suggestion would be as we present this to a wider audience, um, we start with sort of like, you know, what is this SIG about? Maybe a paragraph. And then the set of project is a sub bullet of that. So it's like, you know, we provide more detail, more color beyond just the set of projects to actually. Yes, that totally point. agree. Yeah. It won't fit on a slide anymore, but like maybe that's an okay thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll step back now, thanks. So uh, uh, I think, Matt, before you chime in, I think yes. there was one other question. Uh, was it, it was Jerry? Me. Yes, hi, this is Jerry Jennings. Um, so I guess I was hoping that the TOC could clarify your view of the near-term path forward for this proposal. Um, in particular, in the near term, I, I think it would be great if there was an opportunity for more people to be able to comment. The last I checked, as I emailed about, the comments were turned off on the word doc, which might be fine. Um, but is this going to be uh, added in a PR to the TOC repo so that people can add comments to the PR? and? how does it going to move forward so that then the SIGs that are proposed can start working on the work that they have to do to define whether the naming is correct and stuff like that? Yeah, sure. So, so the next slide actually deals with precisely those points. Uh, uh, regarding comments to the doc, just to be clear, this doc has been out in the open and distributed on the TOC uh, public mailing list since November. Um, so, you know, I had assumed that uh, November, December, January, like a lot of the people who wanted to make input already have. Uh, if there's anyone, you know, and at some point we have to say that it's been out for long enough and we're gonna close it for comments. Uh, if, if now is not the appropriate time for that, uh, we can certainly extend the comment area. It, it, the, the document became extremely unwieldy because there were hundreds and hundreds of comments and, and it took a long time to kind of put everything back together again. So I would, I would prefer, if we can, uh, to, to limit the, uh, doing that all over again. Um, but if, if th there is a need to provide more comments, there have been a few by email in the last few days, and I think those were very well uh, received and hopefully uh, fulfilled some of the needs. Yes, so that, was, that was part of the reason that I was asking, because since the comments were closed, the naming of the security-related SIG was changed to governance. Um, 
And I just want to make sure that anything else that is outstanding like that, people are able to provide that feedback. And if sure. it makes sense to, to do it once the document is pretty much finalized and there's just maybe a handful of comments, that's why I thought maybe a GitHub issue with the PR associated to it might be easier. I don't really know, but. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that makes absolute sense. It should certainly transition from a document to a, to a something in GitHub uh, soon. Hey, we should do that. Can we, I mean, can we do that now? Is there anything stopping us doing it now? I don't believe there is, no. Let's, let's do that as a next step, please. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I think we can go into linear comments at this point, given the nature of, for example, Joe's comments and the ones that were just cited. We don't need to have a document model anymore. We, can, we need to push this to votable state as soon as possible. Yeah, the, I think maybe the next slide for uh, one minute uh, would be useful. And uh, Matt, did you have another question or comment? Uh, well, yeah, I was just going to suggest, I think there's a lot of context here that um, a, a lot of folks don't have on this. Like, uh, Quentin, you went through and um, curated literally over 100 comments on this because it was so heavily discussed and brought that down. Um, but when we look at it like this, this displayed uh, the SIGs that would be under it. And, and there's context like the SIGs don't have any authority over the projects, right? Because we we talked about that and, and I think that may even be expressly in there now, but that is one of the details. And a lot of what these SIGs do, uh, if you look at the responsibilities, has nothing to do with the projects. It's actually things to um, gather information and kind of reach out to the community and to give information out. So there's a whole bunch in there, if you haven't read it yet, uh, that talks about those things. And one thing that hasn't been worked out, I think, if I remember right, there's the end user group and that uh, Cheryl handles. And she talked about SIGs and forums and other things over there that projects and others can be a part of to try to get more of that end user stuff. So there's other things going on in the CNCF to try to get to it. These SIGs are not the end all be all, but there's a whole lot going on. Hold up, Matt. Okay. We are still figuring out what the end user SIGs exact relationship with these TOC SIGs needs to be. The reason being that there are some end users who are asking to work on specific areas like security. Okay. So there's a group of banks that want to work on banking security. So that's going to overlap between the end user world and the technical world. So please, everyone, be a little patient while um, you know Cheryl's getting up to speed on setting up her basic uh, structures, and then we can we can take that on as as a, as a job after that to, together across the organization. Um, also, please, please wanted, go on. Sorry, Alexis, just wanted to chime in and say yes. that's very much in line with my thoughts as well. Um, I want to make sure that the projects and the end users and the contributors do talk as much as possible. But I also want to make sure that everybody is getting what they want out of these SIGs. So it's not finalized yet, and hopefully we'll work that out over the upcoming weeks. Thank you. A uh, couple more bits of context that I think are important. Um, Joe, there are some example uh, manifestos um, that are written down. I, I can't remember, Quinton, if you kept them in or moved them to an appendix or put them aside, but um, it would be good. Yeah, they're linked to them in the doc. Right, excellent. So we believe that when a SIG is created, there should be quite a lot written down about what it's supposed to do. In particular, what are the success criteria so we can track it? Okay, and there's quite a lot of details about that. This question about authority and unbiasedness, we need to make sure all of that stuff is crystal clear. I think if we have any uh, politics or debates or disputes around these things, it will be around those issues. Uh, the particular question of bias was the concern that one or two vendors might try and capture a SIG. And uh, Quinton and uh, the others came up with a number of mechanisms for governance in the SIGs, hopefully to mitigate that risk. Please, please take a look. We must make sure these things operate as um, value adding, but also unbiased in that sense. Okay, that's really, really important. I have a question. Yeah. Is there a, uh, is there a um, uh, for lack of a better word, code of conduct for uh, the SIG members around um, operating in that way? So I think there's an explicit statement that says all of the COC and other high-level principles from the CNCF are applied to the SIGs. Um, Quinton, was that extended in the edit? 
Yeah, there's, there's a fair amount of detail about how the SIG operates, and uh, we, we can probably flesh it out in more detail, but I read the document, uh, I think it's fairly explicit and hopefully clear what the intention and mechanism is, uh, and we can flesh that out over time. Um, I'd be happy to work with you on that. I think my specific concern is that um, the people working on this shouldn't be using the uh, TOC as a platform to uh, slam competitors would be the word to position their own products. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. There, there is wording to that effect and the, the rising tide uh, lifts all boats uh, wording. Right. Uh, is did, 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 does, that, does, that, uh, does that statement apply to the TOC as well? Is that, is that flowing down from the TOC or is that uh, something that we're working on just at the SIG level at this point? So there's a set of operating principles that the TOC um, kind of abide by, uh, abides by. So I think that would that would apply in this case. Can, uh, is that the is that what Dan just posted? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Which for the new TOC, uh, we'll probably we'll have to do a bit of a refresher and get some comments um, on that. All right. Thank you. Okay. At this point, we're probably running out of time on this topic. Uh, I'll just whiz through the steps that I think are next. So we, we'll stick this thing in a PR, uh, allow a final uh, sort of round of reviews, uh, hopefully put it to the vote shortly, uh, select a TOC liaison per SIG uh, to get those things bootstrapped, um, and then uh, perhaps start, you know, not trying to do all six in parallel at once, but start with the most pressing ones, um, select chairs and get those moving forward. That's, that's kind of the rough plan of action at this point. And Chris, over to you. I think we're, we've uh, used up a lot of your time for this. <laughs> no, so, it sounds good. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, obviously we have a review and uh, backlog of, of kind of graduation um, requests, but, um, you know, I, uh, you know, silly forgot to give some time for the new TOC members to kind of introduce themselves. You know, we had some comments from the outgoing folks, but someone pinged me like, you should have the new folks introduce themselves because not everyone knows everyone. So I'm like, oh, good point. So kind of wanted to leave the last uh, 10, 15 minutes for uh, the new folks that were um, elected to kind of say hi and, um, you know, maybe what they want to kind of get out of their uh, experience here or goals. So um, let's, let's do that. Maybe we'll start with who wants to, who wants to say hi first. Joe, yeah, I'll say Matt hi. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alphabet, Alphabet, let's go. Matt, how about, how about go? Oh, hey everyone, it's Matt Klein. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Lyft. Uh, I uh, mostly these days work on Envoy. Uh, super excited to join the TOC. Uh, I guess uh, from uh, Brian's thoughts of, you know, picking things that I'd like to focus on. Uh, I'm very interested in uh, advocating for projects. Uh, so you can expect me to uh, be looking at graduation requirements, uh, making sure the projects are, are getting what they need to thrive. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm also very interested in making sure that we are looking out for uh, people who are actually using this, this technology. Uh, so, yep, thank you everyone. Very excited to be here. Cool. Let's go back alphabetical order. Maybe Brendan Burns. Brendan, looking for the mute button. <laughs> if if not, I will skip Brendan. Start six to unmute. Yeah. <laughs> how about how about we skip Brendan and go to Joe? Uh, yeah. So I'm Joe Bita. Uh, uh, now at, at VMware, but I think, you know, my goals on the, on the TOC looking forward um, is to focus on uh, the community and the projects. A um, couple of things I want to explore is, you know, how can we make the TOC more effective? How can we expand the reach? Uh, and I think things like the, like the SIG proposal are critical there, um, sort of in line with what Matt's saying, what can we do to support uh, projects? Can we get creative about, um, not trying to, to control the projects, but provide more services and more options for them, find ways to put the, 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 the money that the CNCF has to work uh, towards that. And then I also want to explore 
how do we not just boost CNCF projects, but how do we look at boosting this segment, sort of the idea of cloud native in general? Because I think that as we look at the set of technologies that folks use to solve problems, you know, we're not in a world where every single technology is going to come from the CNCF. So I think we have to we have to think more inclusively about you know users beyond just the projects that are in the CNCF. Cool. Um... Do we have Brendan back? If not, uh, happy to go to oh, there. Yeah, I hear, I hear, I hear something. <laughs> All right, we'll go to Kelsey. Since Kelsey's here. Yeah, I may be on a bad connection. So if I drop, uh, don't be oh no surprised. worries. Good to hear you. All right. Uh, so I'm, I guess I come from that kind of user community focus that. I cared more about the principles in the project. So, you know, all the people that are excited by seeing their careers boosted by things like the Kubernetes certification, the companies who leverage these APIs, technologies, or ideas. I'm kind of focused on, you know, making sure that is front and center. Uh, and also trying to make more transparent, I guess, the political parts of all of this. I think a lot of people feel that this is all a mystery and it's pay for play. I think that's a bad reputation for the CNCF to have if you want to continue to kind of put that community face forward. So those are kind of my primary goals in the short term as I learn more. Cool. Thank you, Kelsey. <clears throat> Is uh, Sheng Li from uh, Ali, Ali here? I believe so. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. So I'm Xiang from uh, Alibaba. So I'm working on the uh, cluster management system for Alibaba as well as the uh, Kubernetes container service for the iCloud. So previously I worked at CoreOS on some open source projects, including SAD, Kubernetes, et cetera. So I'm super glad to have the uh, opportunity to work with uh, awesome people at CNCF and from the uh, community. So I hope to uh, help with the adoption, growth, and uh, direction of uh, cloud native technologies. So uh, as a TOC member, I hope li to listen to more end users and really make the technology useful for the end users. And also I think I hope to uh, help with more of the uh, sandbox projects to help them to grow and to uh, e eventually graduate because I think we didn't really pay enough uh, attention to those uh, sandbox projects. Uh, personally, I get involved uh, into a few sandbox projects. I think um, they all really want to graduate, but they don't really know how to do it. So I really want to help there. Um, thank you. <clears throat> Thanks. Uh, and then uh, our end user representative, uh, Jeff. Jeff Brewer. Yeah, hi guys. Um, uh, Jeff Brewer from uh, Intuit. Um, we, uh, over the past few years, have uh, uh, been doing some pretty crazy adoption of, of uh, Kubernetes and um, you know, it's it's uh, uh, Intuit has a long history of of um, of customer obsession, um, follow me homes, that kind of thing, and uh, uh, and really designing systems around the uh, around the user by you know observing their their behavior, and um, and it's uh, it's something that I'd really like to bring. Um, to the TOC is that is that customer focus, that customer obsession with the customers, you know, really being the consumers of these technologies. And so um, we dabble a little bit in the uh, in the open source um, uh, as well. So I'd, I'd like to bring a few of the um, you know of the of the technical uh, pieces in there, but um, but it's mostly uh, focus on on that end user and and the kinds of things that we can do just to just to make those developers a lot more successful. Awesome, thanks Jeff. You know, and if anybody I've, needs, uh, anybody in the US needs a, a discount on TurboTax, you know, I'm, I'm happy to help them out, so. <laughs> Good to know, thanks for the offer. <laughs> uh, is, uh, is, Brendan, is Brendan here? If not, we'll give him a, a little time uh, uh, next time. Uh, cool. Thank, uh, <clears throat> thanks, everyone. Um, you know, we, we have about uh, eight minutes um, uh, left. Uh, we could talk a little bit about uh, graduation backlog. Um, uh, from my perspective, uh, next up, FluentD is pretty much cleared to go. We're just waiting some uh, on some kind of legal 
stuff behind the scenes um, to get done uh, before we call a vote for that. Um, I also believe Brian Grant is interested in bringing Container D forward, uh, but I would kind of like open up the floor to any discussion amongst the TOC on how they feel uh, about the backlog, especially the uh, kind of existing TOC who has a little bit more knowledge and context of, of what's going on here. Yeah, I just want to say a little bit about uh, the graduation process and Fluent D and Container D specifically. Um, <clears throat> We have a set of graduation criteria, but they're pretty lightweight. Um, but we do ha have some existing criteria. So what I recommend doing uh, for anybody with questions is to look at the graduation proposals, which has a bunch of information that specifically addresses the existing criteria. Uh, even I suggest digging into the uh, what the CII the core infrastructure initiative badge means that's one of the criterion. Um, so uh, take a look at that. We also have the project health dashboard, and generally the uh, projects put together a presentation uh, with an update about their progress. Uh, so Container D in particular has all those things. I believe the presentation was in December. Uh, we can dig up a link and maybe post it to the proposal if it's not there already. Um, but, uh, you know, take a look at those, uh, materials we have, and then if there are additional questions, we can ask them. Uh, people are perceiving the CNCF graduation to be a high bar. I think that's a good thing. Uh, we want it to be a high bar. Um, people in the ecosystem, users and others still have concerns about whether the bar is high enough. So that's definitely something. I'm interested in looking at as well, um, because we do want a rich ecosystem of projects, uh, but we want people to be able to rely on those projects and all the context in which they want to use them. Um, so graduation criteria are currently our best uh, mechanism, maybe our one of our only few mechanisms we have to do that. <clears throat> You know, I, I think uh, we have to be careful to, you know, I think we could update a lot of these requirements in parallel by and also kind of respect kind of the queue that, that currently exists, um, at least my perspective there. Um, for the container D bits, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, since there's a, you know, it's generally the way we've been working is asking for a primary TOC sponsor for any of these requests to call a formal vote. Uh, Brian uh, has volunteered both for Fluent D and Container D. Uh, Fluent D, I will, I'm happy to call a vote once the legal stuff happens behind the scenes. And Container D, maybe since we have a new TOC, uh, maybe we leave it open for uh, maybe a week of commentary from the new TOC and community. And if there are no other kind of strong dissent, uh, I'm happy to kick off um, uh, a formal vote uh, on Container D next week. Uh, and the others, um, I, you know, is basically the other kind of graduation requ requests are looking for a primary kind of TOC sponsor to uh, push for, uh, for a vote. Yeah, and if you are unfamiliar with the details of a project and you feel that the graduation uh, information that's been provided is not sufficient, please do speak up because I know for a number of the, the past graduations, um, they're pretty, several, they were pretty well-known projects, so that was uh, less of an issue, but as we get to some of these, I imagine that uh, that may not be the case. Cool. Any other comments uh, from the TOC or the community on this particular topic? We have a few minutes left. All right, I will consider uh, this meeting uh, adjourned. Uh, I'll send out a note on uh, the graduation kind of criteria and ask for kind of wider feedback on that. It'd be good to get something refreshed over the next couple of months, so look for that. Other than that, uh, we'll meet again on February 19th. So thanks again to the new TOC members, uh, and also thank you again to the outgoing uh, TOC folks. Totally appreciate the work that you've done over the last uh, few years to get where CNCF is today, so thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Bye.